everyone, welcome back to the Ponder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to do a painting tutorial of that block house we built in our last episode. Uh, so really uh, inspiration for uh, doing the paint job on this uh, block house is I kind of looked at um, various different photographs on the internet of uh, block houses uh, and try to formulate uh, what colors uh, they would be. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the pictures uh, that exist are of old block houses. Uh, so they're kind of aged hundreds of years uh, and they may not have looked the way they did uh, at the time of this game is being played uh, in Fire of the Frontier. So I did put some aging in it, uh, but I wanted to make it look a little newer um, because it was uh, recently built. Uh, so let's take a look at it. This is the finished uh, product. So you can see that there's all sorts of, uh, I do have some weathering in there, but I did add some browns in there. Uh, originally, actually I had it all gray, uh, and then I, I uh, added these browns in, in here and, uh, and kind of gave it an aged wood look, but not as much as it would be hundreds of years later. It would probably be all gray. Uh, the wood uh, turns gray over, over time. Uh, but anyways, so let's take a look at this all. Uh, I'm going to show you the interior. Um, so that's the, uh, the roof. I kind of just went with a darky kind of gray with a charcoal black and uh, added a kind of a watered down flat black to the top here. And that's uh, kind of got that look. I put uh, some smoke uh, damage on the chimney using my standard... Uh, uh, stone technique uh, and then here's the so I kind of went with a kind of weathered down wood a lot of traffic in there I imagine um, same with the uh, chimney that's in here I added uh, some smoke in it to it as well uh, implying that you know there's a fire in there more often than not uh, some smoke damage in there so anyways, I also added some weathering details uh, on these slots where the rain would have come down on them uh, and left some weathering in there. So just showing all the little details that I've added in here and that we're going to cover in this tutorial. Uh, and then here's the main floor. A little work on the door uh, and you know me, I like to add base things. So I added a little, that's kind of why I added this little edge in here. I wanted to add a little bit of plant life, a little bit of stone work on the bottom. It kind of breaks up all the wood, right? Uh, so I wanted to have definitely some stone work in there. And that's kind of the reason why I stuck with the uh, the chimney in here for sure, uh, is to break up that all that uh, woodwork in here. All right, so that's the finished product. Uh, that's what we're gonna be painting today's episode. Uh, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Potter Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Potter Den and get first-hand information on when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table and let's start painting. Okay, so I start uh, the same way I do with all my terrain, uh, with the multi-surface black folk art craft paint. Uh, I'm just showing you I plan on doing every piece of this, so I'm going to cover the entire uh, build with this black uh, craft paint. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of a bigger brush than I normally do. <clears throat> normally I'd use that smaller brush, and I probably will go back afterwards uh, and get some of the finer details. But I mean, would uh, hit it with a bigger brush. So normally I would just go right past this stage. Uh, but I do want to point out a few things uh, with the black craft paint. So all that texturizing we did on the uh, popsicle sticks, I want to be able to still be able to see that. So uh, I'm pulling the black paint uh, with the grains uh, on, that are on the popsicle sticks. So similar to uh, when I painted the uh, bark ship. Um, we were painting the black with the grain so we can keep all that nice uh, texture on the wood. So now this is after I've covered the entire piece with uh, the black uh, paint. 
uh, just kind of showing you. So this actually took a couple days. So I painted it once, uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, the craft paint kind of shrinks. Uh, so it left some gaps in certain areas, uh, and I had to go back and, and uh, hit those with a smaller brush. Especially around the gun ports uh, and uh, the, the gun slots and, and the, the chimney. Uh, it made it a little more challenging. So normally I would go with uh, this bigger brush. Uh, but I've decided to go with a finer uh, brush, and it has finer hairs on it. Uh, and I'm going to dry brush with a smaller brush. Uh, again, trying to preserve uh, that texture I added to the popsicle sticks. So uh, next color that I usually use, the uh, real brown. And I'm going to cover the entire piece with the real brown, uh, including the ladder. I did mention the ladder. There's the ladder off in the screen there. <laughs> So I did actually get any of uh, that uh, extra terrain. I was going to build some scattered terrain for the inside of this, and I never really got to that. But you can see in the corner of the screen there, I got a bunch of minis. I ended up painting some Braves and some French-Canadian uh, uh, militia and some other uh, 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 British regulars, just stuff like that to add to this uh, overall piece. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I didn't get to the scattered terrain. Right, so just showing you a little bit of my uh, uh, brushing, dry brushing technique here. I'm just pulling up, and now I'm going against the grains instead of uh, uh, with the grains. Same as the bark build. So this is after I've added uh, that real brown. Uh, just showing you kind of a look at the whole piece. So I put a, a fair amount, uh, and then on the inside there, I kind of just briefly showed it, but I made it a little bit lighter where I thought it would be more weathered, uh, where people would be walking on the inside. And this is similar to the, the docks that I painted. I'm starting to add lighter colors in. Uh, I hit the shingles as well, uh, all with this, uh, with this uh, real brown. And you can see right there, this is a better example. Uh, it's lighter uh, right where I'm going to I'm gonna add a lot of colors in there uh, like the, like I did for the docks and make it look weathered there. A lot, like a lot of people walked through there. So I'm going to use a, a different color that I don't use all. This is burnt umber. Um, so it's a different brown than I normally did, So uh, that I usually use. I want to add a few more brown colors uh, to this uh, piece. So uh, I, I got my dry brush there. That's my Army Painter dry brush, and I'm going to just hit sections of it. So I'm not going to cover the entire piece with this uh, burnt umber. I'm just going to kind of uh, hit certain planks and add this color to it. It's kind of a reddy brown, really, uh, this one. It's not uh, as, uh, you know, a Peblo or anything like that. It's a, little, it's a more, uh, it's kind of more like bark brown, actually, but it's a, a little bit even lighter. So I hit certain sections, uh, but I don't plan on covering the entire thing in this color. Uh, I just want to, similar to my stonework, where I just want to have randomness uh, uh, in my uh, piece. So I'm going to do the same thing with this wood. So as I mentioned in the uh, intro, I'm really trying to give it kind of a weathered look, uh, but not a really aged look uh, like the like I said the pictures I looked at. Uh, but I really want to add a uh, lots of layers of uh, different uh, wood colors to it. So now I'm going back to that uh, burnt umber. And I'm going to hit certain areas. So this is what I mean by planks. So I added a little bit of a color to it. But now I'm just going to uh, uh, hit certain planks. Uh, where it's lighter and more brown on certain colors. Uh, and I, I feel this will give me a good uh, age look. Where all the different planks are aging at different uh, times. Uh, maybe they used older pieces. Uh, whatever. You get a real good randomness on it. Um, so I'm just showing you how that, uh, what I'm doing for that technique. So I'm kind of going with the grains on that as well, not against it. Uh, but I'm just, uh, doing random, uh, random planks, just like I would do random stones. Just showing you a part of doing the whole piece that way. So now we're finally going to get to the bark brown. <laughs> so this is what I would normally use in my, uh, uh, my undertones on, on the browns here, but uh, I wanted to add that burnt umber in there uh, this time. So this uh, bark brown, I'm, I'm pretty well going to use the uh, dry brush technique. I'm using the uh, Army Painter brush. I do switch back to that other white brush I was using earlier. Um, 
just to kind of preserve like again uh the grains that are in the wood uh and then i just do some randomness uh again on some different uh planks giving uh, more bark brown to certain things so just really giving it a whole lot of different uh, wood tones all the way through this uh utilizing all those colors So here you can see that I'm doing certain planks. So it's, it's kind of like a multiple of techniques uh, going on here. Uh, then uh, the deck top, uh, again, like the docks, uh, I'm going to add that lighter brown. So we kind of keep getting lighter and lighter in there. Eventually, I'm going to work my way up to the uh, yellow ochre, uh, similar to the docks. And uh, just uh, hit those uh, stones as well, uh, putting those undertones on our stones as well. So then I move to this uh, Peblo, uh, uh, common color I always use. Kind of using a two brush technique here. Uh, we're going to hit uh, some of the larger areas with that bigger brush. Uh, I am going to lighten it on the door uh, and some of the uh, wood planks. And again, I'm going to hit with that uh, Army Painter brush. Uh, I'm going to hit different planks and add another layer of different colors in those planks. Kind of give that uh, orange look to it. Uh, it'll give it some brightness to uh, and highlight uh, a lot of areas, uh, and definitely uh, going to add the uh, this color to the uh, the top uh, inside decks uh, to really lighten it up uh, before I hit it with uh, uh, the yellow ochre uh, real brown mixture. So I'm using the uh, circular technique, and again, this is similar to the bark build, where I, that's how I just painted the deck of the ship. Uh, I use a circular motion with the brush. It's kind of like working the paint in. Uh, and if it was it was all foam, you wouldn't be able to do that. That's why I really like using popsicle sticks. It's You can work it into the wood. So then we got the Necromancer Cloak, uh, Dark Stone, uh, and uh, Ash Gray. So these are all our uh, grays that we're going to use to uh, give it a more aged uh, look to it. So I could have gone all the way gray, but I didn't want to do that. As I mentioned in the intro, I just wanted to make it look like it was aging, but uh, not really old. Uh, this would be not hundreds of years old at the time. Uh, Fire on the Frontier, um, that expansion for Blood and Plunder. All right, so just uh, hitting it again with that uh, Army Painter brush, and this is what I meant about hitting specific areas and making it oranger on certain planks. You already see I've hit a bunch already. Um, and I've added a lot of uh, a lot of color to the wood, and it brings it some uh, deepness and richness to the wood as well. So I do plan on adding that to the stone, uh, but I don't plan on adding uh, that uh, pebble to the roof tiles. I went right to Necromancer Cloak and uh, the dark gray and the ash gray uh, on our my tiles there at the top there of the roof. So the shingles are getting, uh, I really want the whole roof to be, have a gray feel to it. Uh, I do plan on adding uh, matte black over it, so it's going to be kind of a mixture of colors. So this is my messy plate. <laughs> but you know what? I like all the mixtures of the colors. All right, so I've added the grays now onto the wood, and I've used that same RB Painter dry brush. And you can see I got quite a mixture of, I got a really a mixture of all three of those grays, uh, and lighter in some areas, darker in other areas. Again, really uh, randomizing it. Uh, I also did the inner walls, uh, and I contemplated leaving it gray like that. Uh, still at this point, I was debating uh, if I wanted to give it a newer look or stay with an. Well, you know, if people were familiar with the gray colored of the of those uh, block houses because that's what they look like now. <laughs> Most of them are gray. And some wood does age faster, and it gets gray faster. So it potentially could be gray. Uh, but I chose to add a little more richness to it, uh, and uh, maybe they added more preservatives to this. Uh, I noticed that uh, there has been some pictures that I've seen of uh, block houses that still have quite a bit of brown left in them. So, so that's the way I uh, ended up going with it. So uh, now we're going to that yellow ochre and uh, real brown mixture. So it kind of gets a, a rich gold color. And I really like to use that for, uh, you know, deepness on the wood. Uh, give it a real, uh, 
like it's really weathered. I know it's pretty uh, extreme when you put it on like uh, right now in the picture. It looks a little crazy yellow. Um, all the stuff dries darker. So you have to remember that when you're putting these paints on, uh, it's not as bright as it's going to look when you first put it on. And sometimes you're actually going for that bright color and you're disappointed <laughs> when it dries and it goes darker. So always remember that. Um, always make it a quick, a couple of tones lighter than what you actually want it to actually look like when it's dry. So I always do that. Uh, I always say that the two or three days uh, after this... Uh, build is dried uh this block house is dried you get a real good i would call it a patina but you get kind of uh aged uh, the paint kind of finally dries and gets you the finished look you're 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 gonna have on the building so even in the intro uh it didn't fully dried you can hear it was sticking when i was <laughs> pulling it apart um but uh, it didn't fully dry uh but it it, it you, you should let it fully dry and, and it really uh uh, you can see what kind of color it is. You can always adjust it afterwards. Um, but uh, just make a uh, mental note of that. All right, uh, so we're going to go to our sta uh, so standard stone work. So camel, uh, desert yellow. Um, i got to find my next color here. Yeah, to see. Uh, oh, yeah, skeleton bone. Yep, so skeleton bone is next. Uh, this is necrotic flesh. It's that green color I like. And then mummy robe is the final highlight. So those are the uh, five colors I use to do pretty well all my stonework now. I, I don't think I'm going to go back to anything else. <laughs> I think we'll continuously use that. So you can see I've uh, touched all the stonework up uh, in certain areas. And as usual, randomized it, uh, gave it a good random uh, look. Lighter in certain areas, darker, more yellow in certain areas. Uh, I just wanted to touch all that uh, stonework up. And like I said, I, I that's why I decided to keep the chimney in that base. It really breaks it up from all the wood that we got uh, going on there. Uh, and then the, the chimney at the very top of the roof. So then I'm going to go back to uh, this skeleton horde uh, contrast paint. Uh, and I've been starting to add this as a highlight onto my stone. And the matte black. Uh, that's what I'll add to the roof. Uh, add to the chimney stacks, kind of give it a like a smoke damaged look to the chimneys, uh, you know, the fireplaces inside, the chimney on the top, uh, the roof, uh, and then uh, the skeleton hoard on the stones. Uh, the uh, gunmetal, I plan on putting on this uh, some metal treatment on the doors and the little handle on there. Um, you got that uh, little zigzag uh, kind of pattern on the back of the door. That's the locking device for locking that door. So now I'm going to go to that uh, Morfang Brown Citadel paint. Uh, it's a really bright, vibrant brown. Uh, and uh, I wanted to add some, just like there's some really bright planks on this over, overall piece. So i got lots of grays and it's looking real dingy. And you could leave it this way if you wanted to. Uh, it looks good right now. I debated even adding this one. But I don't know. I wanted to add some uh, bright color areas. Uh, this would actually also would be probably a good paint for adding rust and stuff to things. I imagine it's kind of got a rusty feel to it. Uh, but I kind of wanted uh, some brightness in some of the planks. And it's got that nice play and mixture with the grays. And it gives, I don't know, it feels a real authentic look to uh, old wood. Um, that's been seeing the uh, elements. So then I went to a matte white. And uh, I, I kind of plan on using this on, on the roof, actually. And it's just going to be kind of an undertone. Uh, I used a cardstock on my shingle. Some people uh, use a, a foam and other things, and they have texture on them already. So this is kind of like adding texture, but not really. It's just adding some lines in the that I'm going to have underneath the matte black. So it, it appears that there's some texture to the uh, <laughs> to these flat shingles. So I'm just going to add white lines uh, all throughout the shingles. And then I'm going to cover that with some watered down matte black. So here's the matte black paint, Army Painter. I love matte black by Army Painter. I think I've said that almost in every paint tutorial. Uh, it's it's so bad. It's it's fantastic. All right, so I just added some water to it, uh, really thinned it out. Uh, I have it thinly on my Army Painter dry brush there. Uh, and then... 
I just plan on covering the entire thing. So I put all that white down, uh, and it's, it'll still show in certain areas. So you want to imply that there's texture there on something that is completely flat. Uh, but I want to darken this, uh, this uh, roof up. And I take that matte black, and I, I hit a lot of different edges. So this is after I've completed the roof. I went and I started hitting the corners of this uh, blockhouse and some of the trim. So now I want to add some, uh, as I always do, some foliage, some uh, green colors to the bottom, strong tone uh, wash, some military uh, shader wash. Uh, it's commando green and army green. Those are the colors I usually use for uh, adding a the paint version of foliage <laughs> on the bottom. I usually lay that down and then I actually add real flocking over top of it. So you got kind of a multiple colors going on there. So I'm just showing you I use that strong tone wash, uh, kind of uh, put it in certain areas where the gun ports are and uh, uh, where the uh, rifles would be in and around the chimney, just kind of where rain would uh, leave sediment and, and dirt and gives it kind of a grimy, uh, weathered look. Um, so I added that on there. So this is a sorted tufts and flocking I plan on adding to the overall piece on the base. All right, so we are done. Let's take a look at the battlefield. Looks like we got some uh, native uh, warriors here, some braves and, and French, uh, Canadian French militia uh, trying to siege this blockhouse as fortification, uh, British fortification. So we're going to take a run through. Uh, of course, in the future episodes, I plan on doing uh, the, the walls and a gateway and other stuff. Uh, right now, I just have that uh, one, one piece of wall, and, and that's uh, fortification that uh, I got through the Firelock Games uh, website. Uh, fantastic uh, piece of terrain. All right, uh, just take one more look over here. We got some uh, French infantry taking on um, some English infantry over on the other side here. <laughs> uh, we'll just take a look, one more look at that uh, blockhouse. I uh, can't wait to move on and, and start building the uh, gateway and some of the walls and, and uh, uh, building more of this uh, fortification. All right, if you guys like what we're doing here on the Planet End, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Planet End and get first-hand information on when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.